This simulation has been created to help students visualize the data that they're getting on the PVC Freefall Lab. So when students click begin, it will bring them to an experimental setup, much like what they're going to use in real life, where we have a PVC pipe with holes drilled in the PVC pipe. The holes will allow the students to put a nail that will then catch the mass when we drop it in there and hold the mass at a certain height above a photo gate. So students can place the nail by clicking here and it will randomly move it to one of the holes on the PVC pipe. They can set where they want this experiment conducted and what they want the cylinder to be made of. The cylinders will be five centimeters in height and each of these lines is five centimeters from the other. The PVC pipe should be lined up almost exactly with the photo gate so that the photo gate catches the cylinder right as it emerges from the bottom of the PVC pipe. This will be a five centimeter gap also between the bottom of the PVC and the first hole. So when students are ready, they will click on the mass that will drop it into the PVC pipe and get it caught on the nail. The students should then recognize that the uh, bottom of the cylinder is now 5, 10, 15, 20 centimeters from the photo gate. They will then pull the nail out by clicking on the head of the nail and the cylinder will go through the PVC pipe, go through the photo gate, and the uh, program will record, just like your Logger Pro would, the moment at which the gate is blocked and the moment at which the gate becomes unblocked. It's the difference between these two that is important. Okay, so students should use that difference in time along with the five centimeter height for the cylinder to find the average speed of the cylinder as it's passing through the photo gate. That will be approximately the same speed as the cylinder will have when the center of the cylinder is moving through the photo gate. The uh, cylinder is going to be moving so quickly through the photo gate that there's not going to be that much difference between the speeds at the beginning, the middle, and the end and you can get really good results assuming that you're finding the speed as the center of the cylinder passes through the photo gate. Okay, my suggestion for actual uh, analyzing the data is to use Logger Pro and set it up in such a way that you have manual columns for the PVC distance for the uh, block time and the unblocked time and then set up calculated columns to get the delta T, the height, and the speed. So the calculated columns would be the delta T, that's the time that the cylinder is passing through the photo gate. You just take the unblocked minus the blocked. The height would be the PVC distance plus half the cylinder height. That will tell you how far the cylinder has fallen when the halfway point for the cylinder is passing through the eye of the photo gate. Finally, you use the speed. That would be cylinder height divided by the delta T. Cylinder height, you'll notice, is a parameter. So you want to set that by going into your edit parameters, hit add, and make a cylinder height. And in this case, my cylinder height is 5 centimeters, 0.05 meters. Okay, when you're done this, you then type in the different values that you collected using the simulation program. Okay, and then you plot a graph of speed versus height. You should get a really nice square root graph and you find the acceleration on the planet based on the uh, constant for your graph. Again, I would suggest having students do this for um, some planet other than the Earth using the program. Once they're competent at doing it on the program, have them do it in real life with the PVC and the Vernier probes on the Earth.